Hi, I'm Steve Harper. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Owner Insight, and I am very excited to welcome you to the Owner Insight podcast and specifically our Women in Construction series. I am thrilled that Gina Kanganda from ReSteel Engineers based in Dallas, Texas, agreed to be our guest today. Gina and I were introduced to one another by a really good friend that we have in common. This friend actually told me that, Steve, you, when you meet Gina, when you talk to Gina, you are just going to love her. She is so amazing. And she was absolutely right. I think Gina and I uh, met in the early spring. We had scheduled a 30-minute call to just get acquainted. And that call lasted well beyond that. Um, we had so much that we wanted to chat about and talk about her energy, her enthusiasm, her commitment to making a real difference in the construction industry and specifically for helping women really stood out to me. I just absolutely couldn't wait to get her onto the podcast because she is such a, she's a ball of fire and she's a real change agent. I'm very, very impressed with everything that she and her team are accomplishing. It's so great to see an entrepreneur with such fire in their belly. So I'm super excited for you to meet Gina and uh, let's dive in and get started. I am super excited to introduce you to Gina Kanganda. Um, Gina, how are you doing today? Welcome to the Owner Insight Podcast. Oh, thank you. I'm excited. I'm finally getting to see you. So this yeah. is more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, we we were trying to do this a little bit earlier in the summer. I know schedules were a little bit conflicted and that's a good thing. It means that we were both super busy and uh, things were happening. So I'm so grateful that we finally could carve out the time to get this done and, and that you are interested in participating in our Women in Construction series. Mm -hmm. I'm excited because I've seen some of the last podcasts and I know my friend Julie is the one who introduced me to you. Yeah, she's great. I really love her. She's such a good person. And uh, when she told me about this, I thought, okay, you know what, this would be something really cool for me to do along with you as well. Well, I'm so grateful. I, you know, I have to give Julie tons of kudos because I, you know, I, I mentioned in my introduction of you that, you know, she had connected us and that she, she just said, you guys will hit it off. And we did, I think we were yeah. scheduled for a really brief call and we went way longer than that. And we had so much uh, that we chatted about that day. And namely, I think, you know, just because we both have that entrepreneurial spirit, we're both mm -hmm. focused on making a difference in the industry. And maybe just for our audience, if you could give, you know, just kind of a little bit of a high level overview of kind of, I'm a real big believer in origin stories. So I'd love to hear kind of what led you down this path professionally, but, you know, was it something in your childhood that sort of stimulated this interest in engineering and sort of how you ended up forming this company? So it's a, I have a very unique and interesting story, Steve. Um, I came here to this country 25 years ago and I got married to my husband. He's an architect. And when I came here, I came on a dependent visa. That means you're not authorized to work anywhere unless somebody's sponsoring you. Mm. And I applied so many places. My background was actually graphic design and I was doing 3D modeling and all of that. And I tried to apply for jobs and I got all reject letters because they said, you've never worked in the US. We can't offer you a job and we can't sponsor you. Mm. So because of my husband, when he was working in this architectural firm, he went and asked the team there, hey, can my wife come and do some voluntary work, right? So they said, okay, why not? So I went and worked in the uh, in, in an architectural firm that only specialized in K through 12 schools. Oh. And I said, what can I do? So I dived into the design department making color boards for them. And I did that. So one day a HR person called me from the office, said, Gina, you can't be working for 60 hours a week. You're not allowed. You can only do maybe 20 or 25 hours. So I have nothing. I have no family here, only my husband. I have no friends. I've come to this country and I don't know anybody. Oh. Can you please let me just work? Right? <laughs> <But> no. <laughs> so we were just kind of brainstorming and trying to figure it out. And I said, you know what? I need to see how I need to convince this architectural firm to have a graphics department. At that time, no architectural firm had a graphics department. This is 25 years ago, right? Yeah. So at that time, I went and did a presentation on a floppy disk. You, do you remember what a floppy disk? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So I had these PowerPoint presentation with cartoon figures and you know, Donald Duck like running around, you know, <laughs> and <laughs> did a presentation to the marketing department and to one of the partners in the company saying, 
why you need a graphics department and how I could bring in value to that graphics department and how this firm can move on and be different to other architectural firms. So the partner and the marketing director really liked my approach and they said, well, you do make a good case. We will hire you and we will sponsor you. And that was the best day. Oh, right? awesome. That was my start in the architectural department at an architectural firm that was known, uh, really known for the K-12. So I started working there and then they brought in two other architects and we started this little department called GAS. It was called Graphics at um, the SHW Group was the first firm that I worked okay. at. So started working there, learned a lot about you know the design, how to render you know floor plans and site plans. I got into website designing. I actually won an award for my Flash website. No architecture wow. firm had a really cool <laughs> website. But the firm really believed in me and supported me at that time. And then, of course, during, you know, the pandemic, you know, I got laid off, worked at a construction firm for a little bit, then worked at a architectural firm for a little bit. And from the architectural firm, I really learned a little bit. I got a taste of business development and I thought, you know what? I don't want to be doing marketing for the rest of my life. What's yeah. next for me? Yeah. Right? Yeah. In graphics, I went into marketing and from marketing, I thought, OK, what's next for me? Um, I was not happy with, with my growth. And I said, I need to create my own career. I need to figure out where I want to go. Nobody's going to tell me, hey, this is where you need to go. I need to decide that for myself. So at that architectural firm, I decided, uh, I went to the president and I said, I really want to get into business development. Can you help me, teach me? What do I need to do? Just mm. tell me something. So he really got me into uh, the, the, you know, trying to understand what business development is all about. And I helped them a little bit. And then again, the recession hit and I got laid off. Then I worked for a geotechnical firm that geotechnical firm's president really helped me guide me from doing business development. And I worked with him for like six, seven months. And but then, you know, this thing kept bothering me that I'm not going to go anywhere. You know, I'm more of an entrepreneur. And I was like, you know, I'm not the one making decisions. I'm not the one, you know, walking the talk. And, you know, I need to try and do something else. Yeah. Just then an opportunity landed on my lap saying, you know, you need to come to this engineering firm and become the director of business development. And I thought, OK, now I'm at the seat. I've got the seat at the table. Yeah. I can make a difference. And I did. I worked at that MEP firm for about five years. And slowly I realized, you know, I, I did see a lot of things that uh, I felt I was not in control and I had to, it's ultimately my reputation in the industry too. Yeah. And I felt I can do so much more. And then at, after five years, I had this opportunity to open this firm, ReSteel Engineers. I teamed up with another firm called ReSteel Designers that's based in Washington, D.C. And I decided to sell structural engineering because uh, ReSteel Designers were a structural engineering firm with 50 years of experience in the Washington, D.C. area. And I went to my clients and I said, can I help you? What can I help you with? I can give you structural services. They all looked at me and says, we know you as MEP. Can you do MEP for me? And I'm going, yeah, I'll do it. Right? So at that time, <laughs> I didn't have any employees in Dallas. I did contract work with several people. And I brought in work. And then we won some really large projects with Dallas ISD. And then I started hiring people as full-time employees. That's Wow. So seven years later, here I am. We've got a team of 20 engineers now. We wow. only hire e EITs and PEs. We don't hire engineer, I mean, designers. Um, and we started growing. And now we have got tons of K-12 projects. We're working on higher educational projects. We're working at DFW Airport. Uh, we work for the Federal Reserve Bank. We're working on the Mint facility in Fort Worth right now. And we just started growing tons of senior living, multifamily. But the key to it is, Stephen, it, what I felt is that having a good team really helps you elevate your firm, right? Yeah. Without a good team, you will not have a firm. And I have a really strong team here who love coming to work every day, um, who really get along with everybody. And we have fun while doing yeah. our projects. 
And for me, winning is everything. So even if it's a small $500 fee I'm getting, I'm so happy. I'm like, yeah, you got a new client. I love it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, so there's so much to unpack in that story because, you know, you, you were – uh, you got recognized for the work and effort that you put into that first job, you know, mm-hmm. even though you weren't being compensated for that, right? You know, right. that they recognized your passion for it, but you had to have that, um, the gumption to ask for what you wanted, right? Mm-hmm. And, and you wanted to, you know, you know, expand upon those skills in the marketing side. You wanted to be able to, to leverage those and you could reacquaint everyone at the leadership table with why this would be beneficial for them to Mm -hmm. have it. And then you created something from nothing, right? You know, really at the end of the day. So I know you mentioned you, you, you always had that entrepreneurial spirit, but did you have that before you got here to the U S do you think, I mean, was that always sort of there and where did it come from? Well, I, I think I do. Um, my dad, um, worked in the Indian army for about 35 years. He retired as a brigadier. And every year or every other year, we used to move. And my mom had to figure out she had to do something. So she's always doing some new business or getting into something new. And I think I learned it from her to be an entrepreneur and to adapt to any situation. And with us moving every year, year and a half, I learned how to make friends. And I can easily talk to anybody and have a conversation with anybody. And I think that kind of helped me become the person that I am today. That's great. Well, so for, for women that are in the construction industry, because I think that the industry itself is changed, but it's still very backwards when it comes to mm-hmm. interacting with women in positions of authority and decision-making uh, roles, you know, experts at, at the table, what, what advice would you give to women that are in the industry? I mean, one thing I, you know, not to, to, you know, put words in your mouth, but I, I hear, you know, you got to go ask for what you want. And yes. you know, it seems like you follow that advice, but you know, you know, could you expand upon that? And then, you know, are there any other uh, bits of advice that you might offer our audience? So one of the things that I tell any any newcomer coming into my office, right? Like I have an EIT who just joined and he asked me, what is my career path here in this company? And I said, I'm not the one to tell you what your career path is. Yep. You should figure out where you want your career to be. Once you tell me that this is where I want to go, I will have the right ladder to the right wall for you. And I will help you achieve that goal because I don't believe in pushing people in directions that I think is best for them. It needs to come from within them. So I would always encourage women, especially, you know, our industry is still male dominated industry, right? That's the fact. Yeah. And if you don't have, and I'd heard this somewhere and I'd put it somewhere too. I don't know who said those words, but so if you don't have a table where you're invited, you create your own table. Yeah. And that's really what I did. <laughs> <laughs> and my company is from scratch. I mean, uh, this is where, you know, it's all done because of me and my team that yep. supported me in my goals. And, and I think for women to understand and see what is it that they want to get out of it, they need to work towards that and not listen to other people advising them what to do and what not to do. Yeah. I think it yep. comes from within you. And one of the things I remember my ex-boss had asked me when I was trying to get a job in that company, he said, this is a male industry. Are you tough? And I said, I thought about it for a minute. And I said, well, I left my family, moved, moved and came here to this country with my husband, with two suitcases, with no family. I think I'm fine. And I think I'm tough. I can do this. <laughs> That, that was my story about being tough. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But I mean, that's true. I mean, a, a tremendous amount of courage. You, you, you know, had the odds were a little bit stacked against you, right? Because yeah. of the way that your visa was set up and, and, you know, you, you had to make your table, you had to change the rules of the game in order to, uh, you know, to be able to make it work, but you did it. Yeah. And you have to adapt, right? As women, I think we still have family, we have home, we have a husband, we have children. I mean, you have to juggle so many things yeah. and you need to have a good life work balance. And I think that's very, very important. So as women, I think we, we wear a lot of hats, but I think when we come to work, we just focus on work. When we go home, we focus on the kids or the family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think uh, we're very, very focused is what I feel. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> and and I'm, I'm always looking for people to come join my company. I have only men in my company other than another lady who works for me. And I'm looking for women engineers. I okay. just can't find them. Yeah. I don't know where they are. And yeah. as a woman owning this company, I feel like, man, what? why are women not applying? Are there not women engineers out there? I'm sure there are. But how do I attract you know, people to my company, showing them we are a young firm. You can wear so many hats. You can learn to be an entrepreneur. We, you know, I, I believe in transparency. So everybody in my team knows exactly what's coming, what's going out. Uh, I don't hide anything from them because I feel when I got laid off from other companies, we didn't know it was coming. Yeah. So yeah. I felt, you know, every employee should know the pulse of the company on what's going on so they can take those decisions, make the decisions for themselves not get them blindsided. Suddenly you're like, oh, you lost a client and you don't have a job anymore. Yeah. So yeah. that's another thing. And I think for my company, I have been very focused on diversifying my uh, market segments. I don't want to get stuck only with public projects. I want to be in the private sector too, as so that that way, uh, if one sector goes down, the other sector will help me, right? Yeah. That's yep. why we started off a transportation department. And now we have projects that clients are calling us saying, okay, Gina, this is a project. Would you like us to be like, would you like to be on our team? And it's so wonderful. <laughs> That's because awesome. First few years, I was knocking on doors and nobody was opening them up. Yeah. And so that's when I decided, let's just go to the owner's straight. And when I yeah. went and made a pitch saying, there are so many firms out there. We are a young firm. Just give me an opportunity. Yeah. And one more thing, Steve, you know, what I've done is I believe in, you know, exclusivity, right? Um, so what I have done is I have gone and spoken to owners like DFW Airport or DISD, or Fort Worth ISD, and so many other higher ed, ed universities. And I said, help firms like mine to get their foot in the door. It doesn't yeah. matter. If, it's not just for me. It's for Firms like mine who are waiting to get that opportunity give some extra points to firms that are bringing in a new firm into the mix. Yeah. This yeah. way, it'll stop them from using the same engineering firm again and again. Yeah. Everybody is busy, but there's plenty of projects to go around. I'm yep. just asking for a small piece of the pie. Yeah. And I think that has helped me a lot. Um, I, I, DISD has really helped me grow because I'm a prime there at DISD. Yeah. And that has really helped me. Um, I'm a prime in Fort Worth ISD also and a couple of other, you know, higher ed institutions. But um, I think also you had to see, I had to figure out was what is going to differentiate my firm to the rest. Yeah. Right? So we came up with a brainstorm session and we said, storm shelters. I was like, what the Ooh, heck is storm yeah. shelters? So yeah. that was in 2016. Yeah. I realized nobody's going to give me design work, but they will all hire me as a third party a storm shelter expert to yep. come and review architectural plans, structural plans, MEP plans. So that was the niche. We got into that wow. and got a foot in the door with all the fire station projects, K through 12 projects. They all needed storm shelters. Yeah. And a lot of firms who are established did not want to do that because they all wanted the design component. Yeah. And here I am saying, I don't want design, just give me third party review. I'll do it. That's awesome. That yeah. was that was one way of getting a foot in the door. Well, you know, I, I mean, a lot of times people, you know, that only look at, at how to get in the front door, you're coming in the side door or the, you know, the window, right. And trying to find the opportunity. And then once you're in there and once you can show your expertise and the level of experience that you bring to the table and the professionalism that your firm has, then you, you obviously turn heads and you get yes. attention and that's kind of key. And I think that's a really, it's a great entrepreneurial lesson. You know, there's multiple ways to, to earn the opportunity. It's just depending on how creative you can be in order to get, you know, get your foot in the door. Yes. And you have to be creative and you have to adapt really quick. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Well, yeah. let me ask you, I mean, as an entrepreneur, what is, you know, you've been doing this for seven years, you're successful, the firm's growing where I'm, I'm going to take it as my personal mission to help find you some, you know, some female engineers, because I, I think that would be a, a fun challenge to take on, but you know, what are, what is something that really, um, surprised you about being an entrepreneur and shocked you about being an entrepreneur? Uh, the surprise was I didn't realize the financial aspect, right? Uh, 
what I did not look into was you have a project and they keep telling you it's going to start, it's going to start and you're waiting. <laughs> when is this project going to start? Because yeah. you have the team ready yeah, and you have to still make payroll, right? And then this project is not starting. How in the world are you going to pay and make sure that the but, people stay? Yes. I mean, that was a little stressful for me, but I have great partner company, so they have helped support me. So that way I felt, okay, I've learned a lot now. And then I've also learned, you know, different things about the business is where, uh, you know, if you're giving away work to another office, the profitability, right? Which office, how are you going to do the billings? I mean, I felt I don't want our firm to be a profit center when we start growing and having different offices. For me, it is one firm, one part, everything goes into it. And then we figure out, you know, how everybody gets compensated. Yeah. So I've kind of, I've, I've noticed a few things that being an owner now, I mean, those are the things that I did not experience when I was working for other people because I was not there in those conversations. Yeah. But I think those are some of the challenges that I, I had to deal with, which we came out of it really well. <laughs> so well, I, and I, I love the, I love the fact that you're transparent with everything, right? You know, at the end of the day, was that a decision you made up front that you were going to do that? Because not a lot of entrepreneurs or business owners do that. Uh, right from the beginning. Like I everybody knows the books. Everybody knows my backlog. Everybody knows how much we need to make per month to sustain the team that we have. Um, and we have a very good approach of uh, hiring too. It's not just me. The entire team will sit and interview that one person. It could be a structural engineer. It could be a civil engineer. It could be a mechanical or electrical. Everybody gets to meet that person and everybody talks to them. We do a series of two, three rounds of interview. Um, and then it's a gut feeling, right? That you sure. know the person's going to be a team player or not yeah. a team player. And that's how we do our hires too. And everybody's in it together. That's great. Well, and so what's something that has shocked you about being an entrepreneur? Uh, not truly really shocked. Um, it's, it's, I think I kind of felt like I could do this in the beginning, but when the firms were not opening up their doors, I was a little disappointed, not yeah. shocked. I was a little yeah. disappointed okay. that it took so long for a firm to kind of see, Hey, there's this person who's really knocking on your door. They have a great team. They can do this job, but not giving us the opportunity. Yeah. Right. Um, I also have instances where I have gone to a client and said, I know this project is going to come out. Uh, I can give you all this information with the not with the fact that, you know, they're going to put me on the team. They are very good at extracting all the information from you and not putting you on the team. Oh, I've, had yeah. those, I've had those conversations, too. Now I'm being more cautious. Yeah. Saying, hey, you know, I have a good relationship with the owner and I know a lot more about this project. If you really, really want me, now sign an agreement. They're going to bring me in as your MEP or your structural or your civil engineer. Yeah. Get the, get the deal signed before you, mm -hmm. you know, share too much. That, that makes that. a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. And it's, well, it's unfortunate, especially as you're trying to grow and scale a business, right? You know, at the mm -hmm. end of the day, um, you have to be able to display your expertise and be able to show that you belong at the table. And there, it's unfortunate that there's companies out there that take advantage of that, right? Yeah. You know, and, and uh, they sort of string you along and, and try and, um, you know, tap as much knowledge and experience as they can to make themselves look better, but they never have any intention of, of bringing you along for the ride. And it's unfortunate. I'm, I'm a big believer that, you know, those things always come back uh, to yeah. haunt them later. Right? Yes, yes, maybe, absolutely. Maybe karma will take care of that for you. you know? <laughs> but my, my strategy is, you know, not to throw a blanket uh, approach there and talk to anybody and everybody. I yep. really strategize. I pick very few architectural firms, very few contracting firms, um, as well as owners that I really want to work with because I felt if I grow too fast, my quality is going to suffer. And I'm yeah. very, very cautious about that. No project of ours goes out without doing a QAQC on that job. And for me, I'm okay with you know having 15 clients who give me repeat work. That's fine. Yeah. I may have the phone ring one day and saying, hey, have you heard about your work and we want to bring you in? And that just happened recently. Yeah. An architectural firm that I was chasing for like two and a half years 
They finally called me and said, we'll give you a small job. I said, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're calling me. I'm not yeah. calling you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, congratulations on that front. Yo, know, let me let me ask you a question about women in the in the construction field. What what advice would you give? A, I mean, you're an engineer. You know, you're running this engineering firm. So, what would you say to women that are thinking about construction as an industry? Why why would they want to, you know, move down that particular path? And what advice might you give them in pursuing that? Um, so, I must tell you, I'm not an engineer. So oh. I do, yeah, right. yep. remember I said, you know, my background has been yeah. design and yep. marketing and then business development. Um, I don't pretend to be an engineer, but I can I can talk as much as I can. But when it comes technical, I bring in my right. You hand. bring the expertise in. Exactly. OK, I love that. I love that. Um, I think that's a huge differentiator yes. for me, um, especially in our industry. I think, you know, women who want to get into construction, right? Why would they want to get into construction? I think first they need to understand is you are creating landmarks for something that you can come back and say, hey, I worked on that project. Yeah. I think yeah. it's such an awesome feeling to tell, you know, leave a legacy saying I worked on that project. That building was mine. I designed that or I helped, you know, build a project. Right. And again, there aren't that many women in construction, but I think it's such a cool thing to do when you can go back tomorrow and say, hey, that building is still standing. That yeah. is my project. I think <laughs> I it's a sense that. of accomplishment. Yes. I think it's a sense of, you know, that you were part of creating a landmark in wherever, whichever areas there are. And I wish more and more women would get into construction because I think, you know, um, I've seen a, a huge growth, but I think more can be done in yeah. this. And the same goes for the engineering side too. I see, I don't see a lot of women in engineering. I don't see a lot of MEP. I hardly see any women. Uh, maybe they're all there and I just can't find them. Uh, yeah. It could be that too. Uh, but that's my advice that, you know, look into something that you can actually come back after years and say, that was my project. Yeah. That's something still there. I love that because I, I think if you always start with the end in mind, that legacy, I think has a, has a really powerful pull to whatever you do. I think the work that you're drawn to do, whatever that might be, graphic yeah. design, marketing, business development, creating your own engineering firm, you know, yeah. and, and doing what you've done. Um, you know, you, you have to have sort of that, that gumption to say, Hey, this is where I'm at and this is where I want to go. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I, I, you know, I wonder, you know, if, if, you know, in terms of the industry being still a lot of, a lot of progress has been made in the industry, but there's also still a lot of um, challenges relative yes. to mm -hmm. encouragements, especially for women in construction, whether it's coming out of the university environment or, you know, even enticing, uh, you know, uh, females into the trade schools so that they can mm -hmm. learn and understand that skill set that the construction industry clearly needs. Right. Absolutely. You know, but mm -hmm. there's still this uh, mindset, which is somewhat infuriating to me that you don't have your male counterparts being as supportive in that mm -hmm. space as, as they need to be. And mm -hmm. I think, it, you know, mm -hmm. it's improvements are made, right. You mm -hmm. know, and, and you know, the, I think the industry is, is shifting in perspectives and attitudes, but it can't come quick enough because I think there's a lot of talented women out there that would find construction, you know, in, in the larger industry, right. The construction industry, um, a really good career path for them to mm -hmm. pursue. And, and I feel like in any industry, whatever industry anybody picks, right, find mentors that can help you, guide yeah. you. But you want to know where you want to go. And right, when you know that that's the ladder you want to climb, find people who will help you climb that ladder. Because if you don't find the right people to help you, then you, you feel, you know, sad about not achieving your goals. Right? Yes. So surround yourself with people who have done it been there and learn from them or learn from their mistakes or learn yes. from things that they could have done better um throughout my life i've had a number of mentors who have helped me out but i knew what i wanted first yeah. um, so i think that's the key is find that mentor 
That's great advice. And, and, you know, don't just start with, you know, don't just stop with one, find oh, multiple yeah. mentors and in different industries as well, That's right. Good. Or different verticals mm -hmm. within the construction space, because everyone brings a different set of experiences and, and approaches to their work. And, and you just never know what will inform you to help, you know, solidify your direction and where you want to go. So I think that's excellent advice. Well, let me ask you. So the, the firm's been there for seven years. You, you've got this growing, um, you know, client base with some really claim to fame clients. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm so excited for where you are today, but where do you want to be in the next five to 10 years with the firm? What do you envision for the I'm glad you asked future. this question, Steve, because uh, everybody in my team knows I don't want to do just MEP work. I want to be innovative. I want to get into technology. You know, our industry is, you know, I don't want to be another MEP firm just doing buildings, right? Yep. Um, I want to be where, you know, technology can take us so much ahead of what we are doing in our same wheelhouse, mm -hmm. but a little bit more forthcoming with innovation, right? I want our firm to be there. Uh, for example, we're doing digital twin at DFW Airport right now. We're helping a firm who is our prime. But that was exciting for me because my firm got into digital twin, right? And then now I just got another contract where we are going to be helping our prime do all the uh, communicate, visual communications at the airport. I mean, those are some different things that we are going to be doing. expand that uh, service offering, which is what good entrepreneurs do. Yes. Yes. And I think you should always read. You should always see what other people are doing or what are the new technologies that's come in. Um, you know, we are trying to always, you know, go above and beyond and kind of get more options for our clients. Um, like I said, I mean, my entire team knows Gina does not want to be another MEP firm. She wants to be an innovator. She wants to do things <laughs> that not many people are doing. Yeah. What is that? And uh, for me, since I do business development and operations for the company, I'm so focused in on, on that because when I talk to clients and owners, I ask them, what is it that you are not seeing in the industry that you would hope that somebody would come up with? What is that? Yeah. So with you know, asking the right questions, reading what are the other people doing, I think you can come up with ideas and then you present it to the team. And get them to start looking at, you know, how can they do something differently? Yeah. So well, I think that's the key. Yeah, I mean, you're you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, as you know, with Owner Insight, we started as just a construction project management software, but we've expanded into the closeout and warranty tracking process. And then we also yeah. have a planning tool that we built. And all of that came from exactly like you said, asking questions, right. seeing what problems are out there, figuring out how to try and make a client's you know job a little bit easier maybe a little mm -hmm. less stressful and mm -hmm. what that did was kind of it opened for us pandora's box because we realized you know there's silo information the right people are not talking you know to one another the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing even though everybody talks up a good game about collaboration and communication, mm -hmm. there's no rules to the engagement, right? Nobody's right. really setting that up front. And, and I'm sure you've seen that on projects you've been on where uh, assumptions are made or there's just delays in decisions and that mm -hmm. impacts the owner's budget and their mm -hmm. schedule and all those challenges that come with that. But the reality is that, you know, that's what great entrepreneurs do. They look mm -hmm. for you know, little ways that they can contribute and add value that really have big impact and, Absolutely. you know, try and solve those things. And so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm totally enamored with the direction that you want to go with the business because I, I can completely align with that. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been an interesting and really, really exciting journey for us. Well, I, you know, I, I am just so uh, impressed with you and everything that you're doing and just, you know, the fact that you have, yeah, you, you really are a, a, a an entrepreneur at heart. I mean, you've you've created opportunities where maybe others might not have or may have seen too many obstacles to even try. And, and you know, you're you're a living proof of what is possible if you just don't take no for an answer. Right. <laughs> I don't take no for an answer. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, let me ask you, you know, would you have any last bit of advice for, um, you know, for any of anyone that might be watching men or women on this podcast that you'd, you know, you just, 
you know, whether it be career advice or whether it's, you know, that you, someone maybe that finds themselves on a team that, you know, they haven't been recognized for the talents or the skills that they bring to the table, you know, how to, you know, how to, how to get themselves known. I mean, you, you've kind of, you've kind of done a lot of this. I mean, I'd love to hear any last, you know, bits of advice you might have in any of the, that juncture. Well, for people who are, you know, established um, uh, staff members in various fields, right, and have the ability to make decisions on putting your teams together, because, you know, in a private pr public sector, you have to have teams. I would say encourage smaller firms like mine who are trying to just get their foot in the door. Yep. Because in turn, what you're doing is encouraging them to become successful in their businesses, the same time you're encouraging them to hire more people who are going to be more work you know they'll have work right yeah uh, you're employing employees and yeah. you have that burden on your shoulder but it's such a nice burden because you know that if a firm is going to help you out then you can help the others out i yeah. would say don't say no to new firms give them an opportunity and I would say for women especially for women because this is a women in construction yeah. side is Never take no for an answer. If you know what you really, really want, go for it. If you can't find the straight way, go figure out another direction to get you to the end point. I love it. I love it. That's fantastic. <laughs> well, I am so grateful that you agreed to participate in this uh, podcast. Uh, I, there's so much more that I think we could probably dive into. Yes. So we're going to we're yeah. going to likely have to do a follow up episode to this. But what is the one question that I didn't ask you that I should have? I think you asked it all. I mean, I'm, you know, like my company, I'm an open book. Anybody yep. asks me something, I'm like, this is what it is, you know. But I must thank the women uh, who have really helped me where I am today. Um, I've got some really good friends in all the industry, the architecture, engineering, construction, women who are in the right places that have helped me. They have, they have recognized um, that I needed help and they stepped in and helped me just by giving an opportunity. I would say kudos to those women who That's really great. helped me where I am today. Well, you know, I'd say that they, uh, they probably saw what I see, which is, you know, someone that uh, is pretty darn amazing. And so where <laughs> you can contribute and add value uh, to someone like yourself, um, you want to do that. You want to step up and, and do that. So I, I love that you acknowledge that with them and uh, hopefully you'll you'll share this episode when it comes out and say, you know, I was thinking of you when I was talking about this. <laughs> I already have all the names in my head. And I'm like, there's so many of you all that are yeah. like me. Yeah. yeah. And, well, and that's great. I mean, I love the fact that you haven't lost touch with that and, yeah. and how important that is, because I think a lot of especially, you know, entrepreneurs that are successful or experienced, you know, sort of the growth that you are. It's it's easy to kind of like not reflect back and think about sort of, you know, those those times where you really needed somebody to help you and somebody you know to be there for you as you're you're starting to believe in your vision. You need somebody else to believe in it as well. And so that kind of fuels you as an entrepreneur. And so I I think that's a really a powerful thing things. So um, hats off for doing that. Uh, you know, I think it's really Im important to do. I am so grateful um, that you agreed to do this. Let everybody know what's the best way to get familiar with you or if they can follow you on any, you know, particular platform, social or otherwise, and then the website for the company. Oh, best way to follow me is LinkedIn. Uh, okay. You know, every other week we're posting a new project that we're working on. That's been a great platform for me to showcase our work. Um, people know we are still in business and we're doing some really cool, awesome stuff. Um, the other way is just come to my website. We are in the process of revamping our website. It's I created that website in three days. So that was seven <laughs> days, seven years ago. Right? Yeah. And now we are, in, oh, we said, okay, well now we need to showcase a better website. So we, Bear with us. We are working on our website, but our website address is R E S T L T X dot com. It's short from Resteel, Texas, because I want to differentiate ourselves from the DC office who does only structural work and our Dallas office. 90% 90, 90 of our work is MEP in the Dallas office and 10% is the civil and structural. So, okay. Great. And, and, and folks can find out all about your services and, and get in touch with you directly via the website. Yes. And uh, my my cell phone number is my office number. Uh, all of us in our office here all have cell phones. Yep. So that way we're big on communication. So yep. 
a client can anytime pick up the call and call us on our cell phones and we are ready to answer. I love it. I love it. Well, Gina, it has been an absolute pleasure. I look forward to our next conversation. Yes. And if there's anything that we can do to help support you in any way from Owner Insights perspective, please don't hesitate to let us know. We, we're honored to know you. I'm grateful for the friendship that we've got yes. and uh, look forward to figuring out, you know, what, what the future looks like in terms of how just how big and, and where you take this firm, because I know it's going places and I'm so, oh, super excited you. to watch. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate your time and it's great having this conversation. Look forward to the next one.